Hello honey bunches, um, welcome back to another vlog. If you're new, I'm Phoebe. Um, happy Easter. I thought I would vlog um, Easter Sunday because um, it's gonna be a nice relaxing day and lots of delicious food. Um, including I made a tiramisu yesterday for our dessert tonight with just um, some grandparents. So that'll be fab. Always love an excuse to whip that one out. Um, so I made it yesterday so it has time to set and develop in flavor. Mm -mm. I slept in a little bit, did some yoga as you saw, took the doggos, we're dog sitting um, another dog, Harvey's girlfriend, Chloe, um, I've been lifelong, uh, pretty close in relative terms, Harvey's um, a pretty introvert, antisocial dog, but um, yeah, when she came over, Harvey is like all over her, squealing and quite happy to see her, so yeah, she's here for a couple of nights, that's nice, extra Easter visitor. I think it's just me, I don't think my brother's gonna come, I'm gonna tag along with my parents to church. I mainly enjoy the singing, good opportunity for some harmonisation if they pick good songs, uh, and seeing people who turn up like me on more significant days in the Yarning Church calendar. Mm. Otherwise, I think I'll be coming home, doing some jobbies, doing some cooking, chilling out, having a nice day. Yeah, um, this is the start of like my week-long Easter break type thing from uni. It will involve a lot of assignment writing up, just because 
um, this time in the semester, a bit over halfway, kind of need to be doing that. Um, but I'm determined to have lots of outings and change of scenes and feel utterly refreshed at the end of this week. Um, but yeah, this weekend I'm definitely just taking as a no uni work type of deal. Um, yesterday was quite significant in that I actually did have a brainstorm of more recipes to finish the postcard series with. Um, as is probably evident in these weekly vlogs or just vlogs in general, I, well actually I got to three recipes, I don't think you saw the third one and then I've sort of petered out. Um, just because it's really hard to keep your creative um, compartment off your brain, chugging along, popping out some great ideas um, when you got lots of essays to write and whatnot. So, so yeah, got some good ones in the works. back from church um the only thing to say i guess is that it's an aging congregation and you get asked the same questions about what you're doing um it's one of those like extended quick fire rounds to a lot of people it leaves you feeling a bit like what you're doing is a bit boring um anyway um back from that many people that i thought would be there weren't because they were probably away it's a common thing around this time of year because Anzac Day is next Friday, so people take a, a, a juicy week off. One thing I've been seriously wanting to mention, although um, because I didn't vlog last week, it feels like it's been ruminating in my mind a lot, is the TV show special, Bloomin' Heck. I am like so impressed by it, I couldn't recommend it more. The whole eight episodes only take two hours to watch because they're 14 to 15 minutes long. Um, I did read that um, the writer slash person who stars in it, Ryan O'Connell, um, didn't want them to be half an hour long, but essentially it's a gay, disabled, he has cerebral palsy, um, main character in LA, in LA, he's like 28, sort of a coming of age story in, it's not about him coming out of the gay closet, but coming out of the disabled closet. Yeah, being open and honest about that, because he has quite a mild case of cerebral palsy, it's sort of semi-biographical-ish, just inspired from his life, not totally to a T with the details, but um, oh, it's so good. It does so many things right. For example, um, the character, main character Ryan really wants to have sex for the first time, but he's really nervous. And so um, in the third episode, it's on Netflix by the way, if you didn't know, um, in the third episode, there's a sex scene, um, the sex workup, and it is, it is like groundbreaking. It is so good. Um, yeah, it just, it just does it right. It like shows like a bit from each part of the process um it doesn't just sort of make the sex work like this tokenistic character um he's in the background you like get a feeling for how the character is feeling there's not like s sensual music or a score playing over the top it's quite realistic um i imagine and just very wholesome and it's kind of like for goodness sake why hasn't this been done before anyway highly recommend um what I wouldn't recommend though, last night I watched um, Unicorn Store on
again honey bunches um i made a chocolate cream pie you might be wondering why the heck that was necessary since i just mentioned i made a tiramisu but um i'm catching up with a friend um i haven't seen in a long while tomorrow and i don't know if i've made it for her but i wanted to make it for her so considering that i, I want to do a lot of uni work tomorrow i thought i'd pump that one out yes that's all ready to be assembled and now i think i'm just gonna do a bit of tidying up it's really humid today like ridiculously so and concerningly so um before uh, my battery needed charging um, while I was talking about another thing I watched on Netflix, the Unicorn Store, directed and the main character is Brie Larson. Um, I wouldn't say I would recommend. Um, it's like a sweet film about like growing up and accepting you're an adult and having like faith in yourself, but it's in a quite a unicorn metaphor kind of way, which was sweet and like I'm glad the film exists, but I also like didn't care enough about the main character. I want to say it was edited in a way that made you not really care about the main character but of course editing is just one small thing I think. Yeah it just didn't set up the main character at the start of the film enough. Also like by the end then maybe you cared enough about her to see whether she had a happy ending. Um, also no hate for Brie Larson but I feel like she did it when she was training for Captain, Captain Marvel so she's like ultra fit. I don't know I watched like some snippets of The Hunger Games last night just because I saw that it was on Netflix and I was perusing what to watch and it just made me think like like the suspension of belief of like a girl being put into a social experiment of like 24 kids fight to the death but the main character um has to have perfect skin and perfect teeth you know <laughs> mm, in a dystopian world where she lives in poverty likely mm, not so sure <laughs> but yes my next to watch um when I get my hands on a VPN, so it's called. I want to say VIP. It's like when I say people are doing a um, PhD, I often say they're doing a PDF, which is a Freudian slip that I quite like. Because I don't, I don't, I'm not going to prioritise doing a PhD, so maybe me saying it's a PDF is like unearthing how I actually feel about them. Um, no hate if you have a PhD. Oh yeah, my next thing to watch is Fleabag on BBC iPlayer. I'm sort of semi-jelly of, um, is it Phoebe Waller-Bridge, the writer and person who's in it? A, her name is Phoebe, and B, she's a writer, um, actor, which is like a dream. <laughs> and she's very talented. And she also put Andrew Scott in the second season of Fleabag, and I think he's a really great actor, and he speaks really honestly and candidly about mental health, which I really appreciate. Um, he once said, I think this was in like a VidCon Poland interview, a metaphor that he likes to do with mental health is to think of it like weather. Like you can't, um, like saying how a certain, certain situation is going to be, like predicting the weather or predicting your mental health for how it's going to react to scenario X is unproductive because while you can sort of bring an umbrella and sort of get the idea that it might be rainy, you really actually can't predict the future exactly. So you might as well just go with the flow and um, deal with it in the present moment sort of thing. I hope that makes sense, but I really like that metaphor. Yeah, on with the day. <laughs> What are you doing? All we did was 
that smile We laughed at our mistakes Eating cake to our heart's delight But tonight you've lost your appetite And someone's gotta pay But please take my advice Hey honey munchers, just finished dinner with the grandparents. It's about 8.20, um, just remember it's my hair washing night. Oh, it's looking pretty good for a second day. Seriously a big difference when it's just on a weekend. Um, and I'm like less stressed. Not that I'm that, you don't feel that stressed, but just less things I have to do, like uni work. Um, I just touch my hair less and then like the curls stay in longer. True fact. Um, anyway, I'm gonna have a shower. But dinner was great. That tiramisu recipe is so nice. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's my nanny. That's what I call my grandma on my dad's side. Um, nanny's favorite, so made her happy. <coughs> um, had my shower and I remembered what I was going to say. Um, a number of you made recipes and um, let me know on Instagram tonight. All seem to have successes. One of you made it the pesto cauliflower wings and another, I think it's the I don't know what it's called, it's an old pizza recipe on the blog, it has like a ricotta tofu topping on lots of veg and it's a very super quick um, pizza recipe that's actually super good, I'm full of veg and um, great ingredients. Um, so yeah, that's made my night. Um, thank you for like sending through pics and whatnot, um, really makes my day, but of course I realise don't feel obligated to take a picture every time you make something can be an annoying extra step step when you just want to eat it so fair enough and not everyone has instagram so i understand um but yeah hope you enjoyed this video honey bunches finds you doing well i know it's a busy time of year a lot of people are sick a lot of people are stressed with assignments or school whatever is chugging along in your life i hope you're chin up and taking care of yourself yeah okay see you in the next video lots of love bye you can't stop the train once it's rolled on down the track.